And we're back for another 2024 edition of the Double Switch Podcast. Uh, it's been a while. It's been several weeks, and that's not really like us. But to be completely honest, there's nothing to talk about. Like, no, nothing's happened uh, with the Phils. Um, and, I mean, you can only have so many segments um, of just nothingness. So we figured we kind of waited out and see if anything happened. And nothing happened. Uh, I think, you know... The big, uh, the big off seasons that we've had in the past uh, are not gonna. It's not gonna come to uh, fruition this off season, and that's okay because you know you can't have that every off season. So now we're just uh, in a holding pattern until opening day, which is just under six weeks away. Uh, it went by really yeah. fast, but yeah, no, it's starting to get around that time of the year where we start thinking about spring training. So that's good. Johnny, how are you doing? Happy New Year. Um, and happy happy holidays to all of our listeners. A little late, but yeah, yeah. yeah happy New Year's, everyone. I'm doing good, Josh. It's uh, good to talk baseball again. Uh, I mean, all these other sports are on, but none of them are baseball. Uh, which I, anyone listening, I'm sure you get it. The pain. Uh, I just want to turn on a baseball game again. I don't want to watch basketball. Ah. <laughs> no, you're right. You're absolutely right. I mean, it's brutal, but we're baseball fans, and um, yeah, we live for that type of stuff, and. Usually we have some sort of uh, like stuff going on in the off season to kind of get kind of get us through like this dark yeah. time. But now it feels like we all we can do is just sit here and just wait. And it's kind of kind of making me lose my mind. But there's some stuff to talk about. And um, yeah, I guess the first thing that we can kind of talk about now is the Yamamoto pers- pursuit, which um, I don't know what the main takeaway from it was. I mean, he ended up getting paid. And it ended up not being us. But, I mean, for a moment there, it felt like there was a possibility that, you know, we, we could have a new front front of the rotation pitcher. Um, and it, it was new for us because we're usually not involved in those type of players, you know, the big Japanese superstars. Um, that is a uh, – that's waters that we don't usually fish in. But Philly's getting trendy, and you see a lot of big names and want to at least talk. And, I mean, yeah. that's, that's all we're asking for. We're just asking for the opportunity to let um, – let you hear us out. And uh, he heard what we had to say and he ended up going with the Dodgers, but I mean, it does bode well for the future ultimately. Yeah, certainly. I mean, just, I mean, I don't know. No one wants to hear that. Uh, We, we didn't get him, Uh, but it, you're right though. Like we have that presence now. Um, We've, I mean, and there's more and more Japanese free agents that are going to be coming over in these next years that are really good players as well. So uh, maybe if we kind of learn like what these players desire uh, when they come to MLB that can help us moving forward. Yeah, definitely. And it was interesting to see um, Dombrowski's kind of opinion on how to approach this off season, because we thought we were done, but he's showing a willingness to kind of go out and get the guy. If it's available um, kind of like he did a couple of years ago where uh, I, I've heard this comparison before, but Nick Castellanos was kind of like, lingering out there late into the off season and we thought the fills were done and they ended up signing him to a five-year hundred million dollar deal uh, which is a lot of money to spend after you tell everybody you're done um so obviously we've heard him say Aaron Nola's done i mean that was our big big goal for the offseason resign him um and we're looking at the payroll and it's it's pretty high it's you know we're we're in a territory it where is. we're starting to get to the luxury tax thresholds um you start losing draft picks and no one wants to do any of that. But I keep hearing our name connected to big ticket free agents. I mean, Snell and Jordan Montgomery are the two big ones I've seen. Um, apparently you just can't rule us out for those free agents. And I, it's, it's so hard to get a read on what we're trying to do here. Um, I think the, the end goal is to get better. That's, that's super clear, but I mean, is he just playing this by day and seeing what happens? Because that's what it kind of seems like. 
Yeah, I, it's all confusing because at first I kind of just like when I started seeing that Montgomery and Snell were still interested, I'm like, ah, oh, like they're Boris guys, or at least Snell is. Like maybe they're just – he's using this as leverage uh, to get Snell a better deal somewhere else because he knows the Phillies put out big money and aren't afraid to make a big signing. Uh, but I think you're right. I think I don't think there's a roadmap to like what they're trying to achieve this offseason. I think it's just if they can upgrade uh, via trade, via like a – a little bit of a bargain on the market, uh, get someone kind of buy low on like a Blake Snell or a Montgomery, then I, I think they'll pull trigger. Um, I just don't know how much more money they really want to spend. Yeah, to absorb a Blake Snell, who's probably going to cost $30 million a year, I mean, you're, you're talking like 280, 290, 290 million in terms of payroll. And you're, you're like first tier, second tier. Uh, you're way up there at that point. Um, I think there has to be a move to get out to get out from some payroll if we do that. Uh, Middleton's shown a willingness to spend, but I mean, that's a that's a different type of spend. I mean, we we just wanted him to. I, we we saw that we had room available, and we just wanted to, him to use the money it you know we knew we had to kind of get to that point. Um, we've never been like a, a podcast that wants him to do the Steve Cohen thing and just sign anybody he can. Um, but the reports are suggesting that that's a possibility. And I just, I don't think it's likely, but I've been surprised way too many times. So, yeah, I would rather see them go the route where they make a clever trade, maybe, maybe move a contract on our team that isn't great for us and give up a couple, a couple nice prospects and maybe get that good, like that real top shelf arm, like a Burns. Or like a buy low, like a beaver, or like something like that. But I, I really just don't see us dishing out like thirty million a year to Blake Snell, making him the highest annual salary in the Philadelphia Phillies. That would just be pretty absurd. Yeah, that feels wrong to. Even I mean, say. we have all these we have, we have all these studs, and then just be like, oh, Blake Snell gets paid the most. Like, nah, that shouldn't be it. Wouldn't work. Um, but no, if I was a betting man, I'd probably say that we're just we're gonna have nothing to talk about the rest of the offseason I, I truly think that we're probably done none of the names out there i think um i i don't think any of the names out there can effectively be rationalized to the point where middleton's gonna say we need to go get that guy and i think it's ultimately gonna come down to middleton having to say that i think that's how once you get up to this price range and this amount of money that's who it comes down to Comes comes down to the guy who's paying, and I don't think Middleton's going to see any of these guys out there as worthy investments at this point. Because, like we've said, this is a 95 win team if everything goes right, and 95 wins gets you to the playoffs. And once you're in the playoffs, I mean, this core has shown that they can get pretty far into the playoffs. And I mean, sure, Blake Snell improves our chances, but you can stack superstars on superstars, and you, you get to the D-backs, and they shut down your star-studded lineup. It's a playoffs. Anything could happen, and more money does not always equal more um, or longer postseason runs. So um, yeah, I, I think playing well it safe said. is definitely the definitely the better choice here. Yeah, and I, I understand why there's like a little bit of irritability within our fan base right now. I mean, everyone we're used to a big move in the off season now. We got spoiled uh, with like big free agent signings and stuff like that, but. For being honest with ourselves about the team, like we look back to last year, it was not a personnel issue. We have the right, we had the right guys in place, but those guys stopped executing after game two of NLCS, and that's just the truth. Yeah, that's the real problem, and that's the problem they should be trying to solve, not filling in more yeah. more talent. I mean, team's good enough. I mean, but that's a good transition because as it is 2024, I think it's a really good time to reflect on. The year of 2023, which was um, – <laughs> I, I don't even know where to go here because it felt like such a long year. Johnny, in 50 years when you're just that – you're that grumpy old man who just sits in, sits in his rocking chair watching the Phillies all day, what are you going to tell your grandkids about the 2023 Phillies? What are you going to remember oh, from 2023? One thing. Let's start with one thing you're going to remember. I, I, I'm more of a, the way I look at it at the end of the year. I don't, I don't, I don't have the heart to like look back at all those memories because that would like 
makes me all sad and stuff. So I'm more of a like looking at it from like a player by player basis. And like I, I see some of those positives, and that's like the good I remember going into the new year. What are you gonna tell your grandkids about the 2023 Phillies? <laughs> Brandon Marsh is becoming a really good player. Wow. I you could have given me like 50 guesses for what you were gonna say there. I was mm-hmm. not expecting that. Marshy. Yeah, you Brandon Marsh Marshy is becoming, and, and the break Marsh that he ended up a, having. A really he's gonna become a really I'm tell my grandkids that 2023 was the stepping stone for Brandon Marsh to become a superstar. Yeah. Um yeah, Marshy with the plus 800 OPS. I mean, he's one of the guys that we probably should talk about more because he's, you know, he's here and I think he's a productive major league player at this point. Um, to kind of sum up something else along those lines, I think daycare was a big theme of 2023. And I think the development of, I, I want to throw Christopher Sanchez in there, but it, it's really Alec Bohm, Bryson Stott, and Brandon Marsh. And, what we're watching right now, and I, I hope that they can stay together kind of like the Phillies core did like in the early 2000s, mid-2000s, because we're watching a young core here that seems to be improving every year. And that's just – it's my favorite thing in baseball when you see teams like that that just gel together and they improve together and they click together. you know. And, and I think that we're really seeing that with some of these young guys here. And, I mean, that could be a theme for 2024 too is how much better can all of those guys get. Uh, Marsh, Stott, uh, Bohm, Rojas, uh, for Sanchez, R- Johan Rojas at this point. I know they've lost quite a few guys that used to be a part of daycare, but you know I think the, be- the best players are still here, and they're going to be another key to what we're hoping for is another good season here. I mean, the more they develop, the better our chances get. And, I mean, now that you can see that the old guys are kind of starting to regress, like JT comes comes to mind. Um you know, some of the guys are just getting older. It's going to really help if Bohm and Stodd and Marsh can continue getting better. Yeah, because, I mean, that's just – that's how it works. I mean, as those guys get older, they're going to – they're going to stop producing in, like, the power departments a little bit, some of them. Bryce Harper feels like he might never stop hitting for power. But, I mean, like, guys like JT, like, I – you look at, like, his baseball reference page right now, like, if you've ever looked at a guy at the end of his career, this is probably that like last year is probably the year offensively, like where he's like, all right, now it probably really starts to like churn in the other direction. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I mean, they got, they got to step up and become the stars. Speaking of Bryce Harper, this is where I thought you were going to go with it. Um, in 50 years, grandpa Josh is sitting on his rocking chair and off to the right, he has a framed picture of, of Bryce Harper staring down Orlando Arcia after oh, he easy. hit the first home run. Um, I think the second stare down was better, but I, th- I think the first was like, that's when people felt like what just happened. Um, mm-hmm. Because I ultimately that's what I'm going to remember. Uh, you, the, the crushing collapse, uh, the way I work, I'm going to probably block that out from like PTSD. So I mm-hmm. won't even remember that in probably, probably six months. So forget about that. And the, the Brave series was full of highlights. Nick Cassiano's hitting those two home runs. But every year it seems like Bryce Harper has a moment that has to be at the top of the list of Phillies highlights. I didn't watch the yearbook. Um, not sure if I will, but I, that's probably the highlight, if we're being completely honest, because he's Bryce Harper. He's going to he's always going to be the star of the show. He's going to always be the star actor of the Phillies yearbook. Um, and that is a moment that I just felt such pride in this team and and what we had going. Um, it's a feeling that you don't really get too often as a fan where you really feel like you're, you know, connected with the team. And throughout that series, that's what we felt like. Um, we felt like we were on top of the world, and that was probably the, the best moment of that series. So that's going to be the main talking point in in 50-plus years. Ooh. Ah, then I you just brought back some memories. Yeah, how did you not go to that? I I was giving that to you. I thought. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm 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 clearly in my repression phase of the Phillies collapse, where I don't want to. I don't like to bring it up because then I'm like, oh, that was so cool, and then we freaking lost. But uh, the Bryson Stock Grand Slam. Yeah, yeah. Well, we were there. I mean, that's a we were. that's a core that's a core memory because the song 
that was a part of it, the them us singing before he hit the home run was equally as cool as the actual so home cool. run. It was just a full on show of of baseball at its best. And we were there. I mean, that's a good one too. I'm surprised I didn't go to that one, but that is equally as good. Yeah. Cause I will say the Phillies, I mean, I got just like, I got to go to that JT inside the park two years ago. And then that Stott one, but I mean, those moments will, will be there forever. Those are great. Yeah. Last year was, was too easy because we both would have said the, the Bryce Harper, um, NLCS home run that was that was clearly last year right I don't think we'll ever forget that but this year I wanted to kind of see like where your head was because you know it was a it was a weird season of highs and lows and I I wanted to see if you remember the highs or if you are just going to just that sour taste that they left in our mouth at the end of October if that was going to be your main thing but it seems like you're kind of going to look at the good instead of the collapse ultimately yeah yeah, and I, I mean, like, we've all thought about the collapse way more than the success that we had last year because it's the taste we have left in our mouth. But there was a lot of good that happened. I mean, tons. I mean, you look at that Trey Turner uh, after the ovation, like that period of him just raking. That was cool. Bryce Harper's 300th home run. Yeah, Bryce Harper coming back from Tommy John surgery incredibly fast. Cool. Um, something that. Not Michael runs one. no hitter. <laughs> I was about to say I might forget that if I'm being honest. Totally I might will. forget. Yeah, that's something that was cool to Michael Lorenzen, but I, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to tell my grandkids about it. But yeah, they were a fun team. <laughs> um <laughs> yeah, they were a fun team, and it's uh we're we're very fortunate as fans because they do give us a lot to talk about, both good and bad. Um but no, 2023 is going to be a season where we're going to kind of remember the good, not the collapse. Um, there's nothing we can really say about the collapse at this point. But yeah, on to 2024. In the past, new season. You know what I was also thinking about the other day? What? So you remember 2022 and that run? Is there a part of you deep down that thinks that the – the vibes and the magic of that run we'll never be able to duplicate. And that's going to be kind of the high for uh, like, think of, in terms of a, like, think of put, put yourself in a player's shoes. Are you ever going to be able to replicate the energy that that 2022 run gave you? Because if you can't, how are you going to get the energy to kind of push past that? Because in my opinion, looking back at this whole 2023 season, the truth of the matter is 2022 was a lot more fun. <laughs> like, let's be real it was, here. It was pretty 2022 crazy. was a lot more fun. And tw- that That's not discounting 2023. It was a great no, year and no. there were some fun moments. But 2022 was one of the best seasons of my life as a fan. And I'm sure it was one of the best baseball seasons for all of these players, the most fun they've had on a baseball diamond. Does a part of you worry that that's not going to be replicable in the future and in future playoff runs because the, the energy and the well, magic that they had doesn't come around very often. Well, we're not an underdog any, we're not an underdog anymore. That's kind of, I mean, the Phillies now people know that we're going to be a staple in the playoffs and we're now we're, we have the expectation that we should make the, make deep runs into the playoffs now. So as far as like the energy from like a player and like the fan base, like I don't think it's gonna be as easy to replicate it. Uh, definitely not. But, like, I think the players, I don't know if they need that type of crazy energy. I think they just need to execute because you look at the teams that ended up winning uh, the past two years. And That's true. their energy, they weren't having as much fun as us, but, boy, did they execute. The pitchers, their hitters, it just comes down to execution. The energy is fun and all, but. That's a good point. I guess I didn't think about that. I was just thinking in terms of um, the vibes and that they were as good as I've ever seen and as good as I honestly think they could possibly get in 2022. And um, yeah, 2023, I mean, it was good, but you lost again and suddenly you have, you have two seasons where you got close and the bad vibes start kind of piling up and the, the glory days are behind you. Um, And before you know it, it's 2026 and you look back on this whole run and 2022 was the best season. I, 
there's there's a world where that's a real possibility. Um, I'm not worried, but just yeah, acknowledge. You're scaring me a little bit, man. You're scaring me a little bit here. All right, I hey, I had to reminisce. I told you I don't like reminiscing on anything. So I once know. I started thinking about 2023, I had to think about 2022, and now here I am, 2026, yeah. all depressed. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh wait, you know what? I just noticed I didn't plug my mic in. I hear you fine. I think that everyone else hears you too. All right, yeah. I'm glad. Yeah, yeah if anybody's no, watching no, this and. And thinks I moved. I didn't. I just turned the camera around. And that's my uh that's the SS Josh Knapp. If anybody's Hell concerned. Yeah. He's SS a Josh Knapp. I'm a sailor. Um anyway, yeah, 2023. Great year. On to 2024. Spring training soon. Uh if you're going to spring training, we'll see you there. Uh, yeah, if you're gonna be there that that uh first weekend of March. Yeah, second weekend of spring training, I think. I think I think it's a second. Yeah, then weekend. reach out on social media and maybe we'll meet up, have a beer. Yeah, definitely. We'll be there um probably on the grass, probably just catching some Florida sunshine and some Phil's baseball. And we'll be in good spirits because baseball will be back and uh, our Phil's will be back. But yeah, you got anything else? This is a quick episode. Not not much to talk about. Oh, does Wheeler get extended by the end of the by spring training? Ah, uh, how did I forget that? Um, it's a big, that's like the biggest news right now. Yeah, Wheeler's tricky, man. Wheeler's a tricky case because Wheeler's gone through free agency. Uh, he seems to um, – he's already left a team once, so that's not going to be like a – he's not scared to do that. You know, he's already changed mm-hmm. teams. Um, he's only gotten better, which means his price has only gone up from where it was. He has every right to demand – the moon a lot you know he, he can ask for whatever he wants and i i love zach wheeler as a pitcher he's the best pitcher on the team he's developing an, into an amazing pitcher he's amazing uh but he is 34 and you know few pitchers age like max scherzer aged you know yeah. so i don't know i'm happy i don't have to make that decision yeah i think it's going to come down to the wire with the season i don't, I don't know if it's going to happen to be honest i don't think it will Wheeler and Nola get compared a lot, but people forget that Wheeler's four years older than Aaron Nola, which is weird That's because Aaron Nola, we've been watching him for a long time. Uh, it's not it's not apples to apples. They're different situations, and Wheeler can literally ask for 34 now. He can ask for six, six for 200 probably, right? Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, he can ask for like a Verlander-type Scherzer AAV if he wants. I mean, he's – He's got a lot of power because he left a lot of money on like that table first deal with the Phillies. I mean, it was a great value deal for the Phillies. DeGrom got five over 180. DeGrom was, is better, but DeGrom comes with a lot more injury risk. So that's not a super good comparison. But DeGrom was 34, I think. So yep. maybe there's a framework there. And I, I think you need Zach Wheeler at the top of your rotation if you want to um, – Build a winner. Uh, Aaron Nola is very good. We don't know if he's 1A like Zach Wheeler has proven to be. And, you know, the kids behind him, you, you never know what's going to happen there. So Zach Wheeler is critically important to this team in this future. Absolutely. I think it's just if we're willing to bet on him for five plus year, five, six years, which is gets really close to 40, uh, which is, I mean, that's a dangerous bet. Uh, I mean, we we're clearly not afraid to do it position players, but a starting pitcher is a different animal. Uh, yeah, it's um, if it comes down to giving Blake Snell six and for one eighty or Zach Wheeler six for one eighty, just extend Wheeler. Um, yeah, so I, agree I completely. Yeah, I I'd go that direction. But thank you for bringing that up because I completely forgot about it. Yeah, Got anything but- else? Got anything else in your back pocket? Uh, I got. I actually got. I got, I got a quick theory. Uh, oh, this God. one, it's, it's it's a little nugget. If anyone's still listening, but uh, I think the Phillies. This is like if I'm Rob Thompson, if I, or I'm in the front office here. I took a deep dive into Tywin Walker's splits. Oh God! <laughs> through his career, through his okay. career, and uh, Dan Kern, uh, recurring guest of the podcast, actually mentioned it on our podcast that. Tom Walker is not a good second half pitcher. After after June, 
he's not it 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 really is not that pretty. Uh, I think we ought to consider letting Tywan Walker rock for the first th- three months and then switching him out with uh, Mick Abel. What are we going to have him do for the last second half of the season? <laughs> A phantom I stint. Give him the little pitch counter that the like high school and just keep make him keep pitches. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, oh my exactly. God. Uh, yeah, that is a problem. Uh, it's a problem that everybody knows about, but I don't even know like how you – like I don't know what to do about that. That's just – I don't know. Good point, but I don't know. All right. All right, we'll, so, we'll find out. <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, if anybody was, has any great, was... great ideas, yeah. please write in and let us know of your great idea. Yeah, because that, right that's now, how little is going on. <laughs> all we have right now is to make Tywin Walker keep pitch count. In July, August, and September. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah, that's that's where we're at here in uh, January second oh, of uh, the new year. It is a slow off season. Man. Yeah, it is slow. Spring training <laughs> not come soon enough. Oh my god! I, I keep I keep updating MLB trade rumors, but there's just nothing there. There's nothing to see. Yeah. Ah. All right. Well, unless you got anything else, I think that should do it for this episode. Real quick, um, Phillies five K. If you're running in that, I know there's some Phillips fans in that. Johnny and I will also be running in that. We got to sign up tomorrow, yep. by the way. So don't forget about that. You start training? Uh yeah, dude, I'm in good shape. Film film fit. What, what so you did start training? Yeah, like I can run like two miles right now. Okay. Yeah. So we'll be there probably towards the back of the the big mosh pit running, but we'll be there. Um with that being said, as always, thank you guys for listening. Um Sorry, we don't have anything to talk about. Not really our fault. Um, it's not kind of out of our control. If anything happens, we'll we'll be back. But if not, I guess we'll get back to you in a couple of weeks when spring training's on its way. But as always, thank you guys, and we will talk to you soon. Go Phils. Forge through this boring offseason. <laughs>